Hello kids and welcome again to Mrs. Bracken's Cardboard Theater. Today we're going to talk about energy roles in the ecosystem. And whenever we talk about energy in our ecosystem, the ultimate source of energy for almost every single ecosystem here on our planet is going to be the sun. So the sun shines down on us and brings energy to us. The sun, however, is an abiotic, which means non-living factor. And so how does this abiotic factor get energy to the biotic living parts of the ecosystem? Well, the organisms that are going to be responsible for that link between the abiotic and the biotic are going to be a category called producers. Producers have a special ability where they can take carbon dioxide and sunlight and turn it into food through a process called photosynthesis. Photo means light, synthesis means to make, so it literally means to make things with light. Now when we think about our producers, almost everybody is going to think about plants because on land, plants are our most common producer. However, in Kingdom Protista, there are protists like algae and phytoplankton, which are water organisms, that are able to do the same thing. They're able to take carbon dioxide and sunlight and turn it into food. So we have this wide variety of producers that are able to do this through photosynthesis. Now, there is one tiny exception of producers that do not use sunlight, and those are bacteria that live in deep ocean thermal vents. And they are able to take chemical energy from these thermal vents and turn it into food energy and become the part of their ecosystem that are the producers. But other than those deep ocean thermal vents, all of the other ecosystems can trace their energy back to the sun and the producers that are able to convert that sunlight and carbon dioxide into food. Now, you don't have this ability. You cannot take carbon dioxide and sunlight and you cannot turn it into food, but you still get energy and are able to survive. So how does that happen? Well, that's because you're in another category. You are a consumer. Consumers are going to be organisms that consume or eat other organisms in order to obtain their energy. So they're gonna feed on other organisms break down those organisms, and then get the nutrients and energy they need from those organisms. So those are consumers. There are a specific group of consumers that only eat things that are already dead or the waste products of living things. And that group of consumers is going to be called decomposers. Now, decomposers serve two very, very important purposes in our ecosystem. Decomposers are going to make sure that we don't have dead things or waste products from living things laying all over the place because, well, that would be pretty gross. So they get rid of that material. And what they do is their second great purpose, they recycle that material back into its nutrients and put those nutrients back into the ecosystem again. So decomposers like this mushroom or bacteria or earthworms are super important to ecosystems because they are the recycling centers of these ecosystems, taking the dead things or the waste products from living things and putting them back into that system so that they can be used all over again. Now, as we talk about our consumers, we can be even more specific in how we talk about them and put them into categories based off of exactly what they are feeding off of. Now, as we talk about these more specific categories, they're all going to have the same affix, and that affix is vor. Vor means to devour or eat. And so these things are all going to be consumers and feed off of other things. And our first category of vors or consumers is going to be herbivores. Herba means plant. So our herbivores are going to be things like our little cow friends here that only eat producers, in this case, plants for these cows. So if you have an organism that only eats producers, it will go into the category of herbivore. Our next group of consumers are only going to eat other consumers. And they are going to go into the category of carnivore. Carny means flesh. And so as we talk about these organisms, these are gonna be organisms that only eat other consumers. Now I had problems finding a carnivore here at my house, but this is a legitimate example. I know it doesn't look very threatening, but they are actually, if you live at the bottom of the ocean, very stealthy predators and they are starfish. 
there are large amounts of the starfish, starfish populations that are carnivores. They go up on prey, they sneak quietly, and they pry open shells of things like mussels and oysters and clams with the suckers on the bottoms of their arms, and then they release their stomach from out of their mouth and it engulfs their prey and sucks it back in through their mouth and into their body and they digest it there. So see, you were never threatened by a starfish before, but they are very, very good carnivores actually. So they are flesh eaters or they eat only consumers. Now there are a lot of organisms that don't just fall into the category of herbivore or carnivore. And so they are going to eat both of those categories and they're called omnivores. Omni means all. So they eat both plant and consumer material. They eat producers and consumers for the omnivores. And an example of that would be our chicken here because he is going to eat both plant material but also things like insects. And so he eats producers and consumers and that puts him in the category of an omnivore. There is one last category, and that is going to be our detritivores. Detrita actually means debris. Um, and so detritivores are going to eat dead or decomposing things. So that would be once again, something like our mushroom. It could be carrion beetles. Um, there's a lot of things that can fall into this category. Earthworms, bacteria are all going to be detritivores where they eat dead or decomposing material. Um, if a detritivore is large, oftentimes people will use the term scavenger instead of detritivore. They are kind of interchangeable where they're going to eat things that are already dead or decomposing. So as we talked about these things, we have the sun which is our ultimate source of energy, and it brings our energy to our planet. The producers take that energy from the sun, they use carbon dioxide and sunlight to create food, the consumers then eat those producers, and consumers eat other consumers and move that energy on through the line. So I hope you learned more about how energy moves through our ecosystem. We will talk more about how these things happen in the ecosystem in our next video, but for today, I'm going to say goodbye.